All right. Hello, friends. And um, let's discuss the physiology questions in your grand test. So let's look at the first question. The first question says bilateral vagotomy causes total loss of which of the following. Now, the key word here being a total loss. Now, as far as the total loss is concerned, um, we will have to go with primary esophageal peristalsis, right? Primary esophageal peristalsis is mediated by the vagus. Esophage, esophageal peristalsis is of two types. There is a primary as well as a secondary. Primary esophageal peristalsis is mediated by the vagus during swallowing. Uh, this is mediated by the vagus during swallowing and the secondary esophageal peristalsis. Now, what is the role of secondary? Secondary esophageal peristalsis uh, will happen once the primary fails to move the food forward. If primary fails, then secondary will take over. And secondary esophageal peristalsis is by the local plexus. This is by the local neurons. Primary is by the vagus. So a bilateral vagotomy will cause loss of primary esophageal peristalsis. What is the effect of vag a vagotomy on gastrin release and gastric acid secretion? Of course, vagus is involved in uh, gastrin release and in gastric acid secretion but please remember this is not the primary mechanism for release of gastrin or for gastric acid secretion so bilateral vagotomy will definitely reduce the gastrin release and gastric acid secretion but will not cause a total loss total loss will be of primary esophageal peristalsis Let's have a look at the second question. The second question says the site of maximum water absorption is which of the following? Now, uh, as far as water absorption in the GI tract is concerned, the first important point is that there is almost 9000 ml of water which enters into our small intestine every day and where does this 9000 ml come from this is the water that we drink water in the food that we eat and also our secretions this 9 liters of water enters into the into the small into the small intestine the site of maximum absorption is in fact the jejunum jejunum absorbs 5500 ml of water is absorbed out of 9000 ml 5500 ml is going to be absorbed in the jejunum jejunum is the site of maximum absorption then um, another 2000 ml is absorbed in the ileum colon we normally tend to think that colon is the maximum is the site of maximum water absorption but no it is the jejunum colon in fact absorbs about 1300 ml of water and the remaining 200 ml is excreted in the feces right so site of maximum absorption of water becomes the jejunum Let's have a look at the next question. Which of the following lipid soluble hormones do not need proteins for transport? Let's have a uh, the all of these four examples are of lipid soluble hormones and lipid soluble hormones are transported along with proteins. But out of these four examples, the ones which do not require a protein for transport is in fact DHEA dihydroepiandrostenedione dihydroepiandrostenedione and the adrenal androgens these are the ones which do not require proteins for transport all lipid soluble hormones will require proteins for transport but dha uh, and adrenal androgens do not require proteins for transport uh, which are the common proteins mm -hmm. T4 is mainly transported along with TBG. T4 is transported with TBG. Cortisol and progesterone. Cortisol and progesterone are both transported with cortisol binding globulin. Cortisol binding globulin. This is this helps in the transport of cortisol and progesterone. T4 mainly by thyroid binding globulin. Let's have a look at the next question. This says, which of the following aquaporins is involved in water absorption from the PCT? Now, aquaporin 1 is present in the PCT where maximum water absorption takes place. Two thirds of water is absorbed in the PCT and this is with the help of aquaporin 1. Even the descending thin segment has got the aquaporin 1 and how much of water absorption takes place in the descending thin segment? This is about 15 to 20 percent. Aquaporin 3 and 4 are present in the collecting duct. Aquaporin 3 and 4 in the collecting duct. Uh, uh, collecting duct, the aquaporin 3 and 4 
these are present on the basolateral membrane basolateral membrane basolateral membrane of the p cells in the collecting duct basolateral membrane of the p cells of collecting duct you've got aquaporin 3 and 4 what about aquaporin 2 this is also in the collecting duct but this is present on the luminal side this is on the luminal side luminal membrane of the p cells of in the collecting duct right so basolateral membrane aquaporin 3 and 4 luminal membrane aquaporin 2 pct and descending thin segment aquaporin 1 now out of these which are um, which are affected by adh it is aquaporin 2 adh will increase the insertion of aquaporin 2 on the luminal side of the p cells in the collecting duct and thereby it helps to increase water absorption adh has no effect on aquaporin 1 3 or 4 uh, so the answer to this question in the pct aquaporin 1